Hello and welcome to day three of 30 days of Photoshop. Today we're discussing file formats, how to save your images with all your layers intact and the best formats for exporting your image out for web, print and social. So today we're talking all about file formats and as we know Photoshop is insanely powerful and it can read just about any file format there is. Now when it comes time to working with file formats there's kind of like two big things I recommend. One is always saving a layered file and this is going to be for you that you can get back to this at any time like a Photoshop document is the perfect layered file for your reference. Then you want to always make sure you save another version and this is going to be exported out. This is going to be for print, this is going to be for web, for social, anything you're exporting out and usually this is going to be a flattened image. So in today's video we're going to do a little bit of editing and then we're going to talk through all of the most common file formats and which is best for different case scenarios. So we're starting off today by editing a JPEG. Now this image is from a stock image website and as you can see it's .jpg. This is a perfect file format for sharing out on the internet. It's going to be flattened and compressed to have a lower file size and it's going to display well on the web. So we're going to make some edits and then go ahead and save this as different file formats. First thing I want to do, I want to make my subject just a little bit brighter. You can see she's just a tiny bit dark compared to the rest of the image. So we're going to go over here to our adjustments panel. There we go. If you don't see your adjustment panel, simply go to window and then down here to adjustments. Fantastic. We're going to start off with brightness and contrast. So let's go ahead and click on brightness and contrast. There we go. And here it's going to open up my properties panel. I'm going to increase our brightness just a little bit. There we go. Now, as you can see, this is increasing the brightness of my entire image. What if I just want this to be visible on our subject? Well, I'm going to use a gradient to make it visible on our subject and kind of like have it fade out. So we're going to go back to our layers here. Now you can see my adjustment layer for brightness and contrast, and I have a layer mask. This is the perfect place where we can use a gradient to make it visible on our subject and then fade out. Okay, so let's make sure we click on our layer mask. Now, if you click on your adjustment, you can see a white rectangle right around the adjustment icon. You click on the layer mask and you can see the white rectangle around the layer mask. So make sure you click there. Cool. Next, we're going to go to our gradient tool. You can hit G or just go right to your gradient tool. We're going to be using a regular gradient. I'm going to click here on our drop down box and here where we see our basics. There we go. We're going to use a black to white. This is perfect for a layer mask. There we are. And then here we're going to make sure we're using a radial gradient. So go ahead and click there. Now I'm going to click and drag out from the center and we can see this is the exact effect that we want. It's brighter in the center and darker towards the edges. Now if this isn't exactly how yours looks, you can use this option here at the top. By default it might look like this, okay, where it's actually dark in the center and then gets light on the outsides. We want to make sure we click on reverse, there we go, so it gets light in the center and dark on the outside. Now keep in mind what this gradient is doing, you can see here on our layer mask, is it's making the center of the layer mask white and it's fading out to black. Now because this is a brightness contrast adjustment layer, I can still double click there and adjust my brightness at any point in time. All right, that looks really good. The next thing I want to do is a little bit of color grading. So for our color grading, we're going to go here to our adjustments. I'm going to click here on gradient map. And as soon as I click on gradient map, we can see, okay, I don't really see much on our image. Let's go ahead here in our properties panel. And I'm going to click here on the down arrow and see we have a lot of different gradients. Let's go ahead and open up maybe a blue gradient. And I can kind of click through a few of these, but you can see it's a really strong effect. Now gradient maps are fantastic for color grading your images, but you don't want to use them at 100% visibility. So let's go back to our layer panel here and you can see here's my gradient map. Right now my opacity is at 100%. So I'm just going to click where it says the word opacity and drag this to the left. And as I do that, you're going to see it's just going to get more and more subtle and you can go to where you think it looks pretty good. Maybe 10, 15, 20% looks pretty good. Now we can always go just double click right here on our adjustment layer, which brings us back to properties. And then we can go in here and choose any of these gradient maps that we want. And you can see each of them is going to give us a slightly different color grade for our image. This is such a fun and easy way to apply color grading to your photographs. Ooh, like that red looks really, really cool. I like that a lot. Let's go back to our layers. I'm going to make it a little bit less visible. But there we go, that gradient map really made that image interesting. I like this a lot. Okay, so we did a simple edit, right? We have our background layer, we did brightness and contrast to make our subject a little bit brighter, and we added a gradient map. 
So now that we've created our simple edit, it's time to save out a layered file. That way, if we want to come back and make changes at any time, it's really easy to do so. So let's go ahead and talk through the different file formats for saving our images. So to go ahead and save, we're going to go up to File and then down to Save As. Now, you can choose where you would like to put this, but I want to call attention right down here to the very bottom where we have click there four different formats. So let's go ahead and talk about each one of these formats. So first we have a Photoshop document or a PSD. This is going to keep your layers, masks, adjustment layers, vectors, basically everything intact for Photoshop. Now this is limited to a two gigabyte file. So if you're working with a very large file, you're not going to be able to save as a PSD. This is really best for editing and re-editing in Photoshop. And the only downside of this is it's not very compatible with external editing programs. So if you want to edit this across other non-Adobe apps, Photoshop document is not necessarily your best choice. But if you're going to stick within Photoshop, a PSD is the way to go. Next, we have a large document format. Think of this as Photoshop's big brother. This is anything that's going to be larger than two gigabytes. Let's say you're working on a movie poster that has a ton of smart objects and high resolution images and many, many layers. This is where you're going to want to save this as a large document format. This format supports up to 300,000 by 300,000 pixels, which is absolutely enormous. And it has all the same features as a PSD Photoshop document. Now, the only downside here is it really doesn't work with other external editing apps. This is going to work in Photoshop. Now, a quick little note on the large document format. Generally, I don't suggest saving this by default. I always recommend saving as a Photoshop document. And if your document size gets too large, Photoshop is going to automatically tell you, hey, it's too large to save as a regular Photoshop document. Let's save it as a large document format instead. Next, we have a Photoshop PDF. This combines raster and vector format. Vectors are things like anything you do with the pen tool or the shape tool, as well as type. This will keep all of your layers, which is an option, and it will keep all of your fonts if you embed those fonts in the document. This is going to be really great for client proofs, for forms, and for print layouts. And you can choose how much compression you'd like to add when you're saving it. The nice thing about a Photoshop PDF is this can be opened in Adobe Acrobat, Illustrator, InDesign, as well as Photoshop. And our last option is a TIFF, which does support layers as an option. It supports transparency and high color depth. You can basically choose to save an uncompressed version of your file. A TIFF is used a lot in print, archiving, and professional workflows. If you're working with a lot of different professional clients, oftentimes they will suggest you save it out as a TIFF because it's really compatible with other programs other than Photoshop. Now the file sizes here are going to be big, but it's really supported, especially when you're going to take your images off to print. So if you're printing, a TIFF is the way to go. So now let's get back to this image. Because I plan on saving and editing and working with it just in Photoshop, we're going to go ahead and choose our Photoshop file format, which is a PSD. And let's go ahead and click on Save. There we go. So here we have fileformats.psd. Perfect. Let's go ahead and close this out and open it again to see we have everything intact. So we're going to go ahead and close this out with this X up at the very top left. I'm back on my home screen. And here we have, let's just scroll down here. We have our original JPEG that we opened, fileformats.jpg. And then we have our fileformats.psd. So let's go ahead and click there. It's going to open this back up. And you can see now I have all of my options perfectly intact. I can turn my color grading off and on. I can turn my brightness and contrast off and on. And I can change these settings at any time point in time. So this is going to be perfect for me. I always want to make sure that I'm saving out a layered file that's going to be for my use. And then we're going to get into exporting. So for exporting our image out, there are a few ways to do this. My favorite one is to go to file down here to export and export as this is a fantastic dialogue. So here you can see your image. This is your image file name. This is the format in which you're going to save. This is our resolution and this is our file size. So here in the top right, you're going to see you have three different options. Let's go ahead and click there and talk through each of these three options, PNG, JPEG, and GIF. So we're starting off with a JPEG, and this is a flattened image. There are no layers and there are no transparency. But as a positive side, this is going to be a very small file size compared to other ways of exporting out your images. So the thing to remember about a JPEG is that it is a compressed image, and you can actually choose the amount of compression in Photoshop. 
So a lot of compression will mean a lower quality image, but also a lower file size. You can choose less compression, which will give you a higher quality image, but also more file size. So a JPEG is gonna be great for photos, web images, and social media. So let's go ahead and show you around the settings for a JPEG. So we're gonna choose JPEG here. Next, you can choose your quality. Now, if I take my quality all the way up to the very top, you can see my file size jumps to 14 megabytes. If I take my quality a little bit lower, quality of about two, you can see my file size is much lower. I can always use the plus icon here. Let's go ahead and zoom in all the way to 100% and see if I can really even notice a difference. So we're gonna go our quality all the way up to the very top. And you know what? It looks really, really similar to if I bring my quality a little bit lower. So because this is really great for web images, you always wanna choose the lowest possible quality you can while making sure your image looks good because it's gonna make your image as small as possible. Here you also have the option to change your image width as well as height. And of course you can just choose your scale. For instance, I could go here and I wanna say scale this by 50%. It's gonna automatically put that in. And now you can see my image size is gonna be 345 kilobytes. So a lot of the time when we're uploading images to the web, we want them to be as small as possible in terms of our file size. The other thing that I highly suggest when choosing JPEG is to scroll all the way to the bottom of your menu here and choose your color space, convert this to an sRGB and embed color profile. This is gonna make sure it's gonna show up really nice and the color is gonna be true to life on the internet. The next file format we're gonna talk about is a PNG. So let's go all the way up here to the very top. We're gonna to just choose our PNG. Now, the nice thing about a PNG is that it actually does support transparency. So we're gonna have no lost quality. Now, this is not a compressed image. In fact, here on the very bottom, I'm gonna take my scale Let's go ahead and bring this all the way back to 100% in terms of our scale. And let's take a look at our file size. So you can see it's just gonna take just a second to load as it has a much larger file size. But here we're going to see right over here, once this is done, that's 16.2 megabytes right now. This jumped all the way up to 44.6 megabytes. And remember as a JPEG, we got this under one megabyte. So it is nice that you can save an uncompressed version of your image with transparency, but your file size is gonna be much larger. Now this format is really best for logos, UI elements, and anything that needs a transparent background. It's not so great for just saving out full size images that you wanna save onto the web. And the last file format we're gonna take a look at today is a GIF, also pronounced as a GIF, depending on who you talk to. So let's go ahead and click here. We're gonna go down to a GIF or a GIF. Now, one thing to know about a GIF is this is a very compressed file format. In fact, it's limited to 256 colors. So as I zoom in here, there we go. We're just gonna go ahead and zoom in. You're gonna see that I don't have nearly the color depth that I did in the JPEG. The main reason we use a GIF or a GIF is that it does support animation, frame by frame animation. So anytime you see an animated image on the internet, unless it's a video, this is actually saved out as a GIF or a GIF. This format does support transparency, but only in one bit, meaning either it's on or off. There's no such thing as 50% transparency in a GIF, like we would have in a PNG. This is really best for simple web animations and memes and really small icons. So our quick use guide here is use a JPEG when you wanna save out photos and gradients and you want a small file size. Use a PNG for when you wanna save out images with transparency with sharp edges like a logo or an icon. And you wanna save out as a GIF when you have short low color animations or if you want retro style graphics with limited color palettes. So in this case, because I wanna share this with my friends, we're gonna go ahead and choose our JPEG as our format. My quality, we're gonna choose right here in the middle. This looks pretty good. And we're gonna show you one more great feature within this export as dialog. Here on the very top left, we're gonna go where it says scale all. Now my size for the first one, we're gonna choose one X and my suffix, I'm just gonna choose 100. Okay, now let's go ahead and click on this plus icon and we're going to go do a half size image and this is going to be at 05X. There we go. I could even change this to say like at, there we go, 100 or at 1x. There we go. That looks pretty good. So now all I have to do, because I'm going to save two different versions of this, this is going to be full size, this is going to be half size. All I have to do is click here on export and then put this exactly where we need it. So I'm going to put this in my sample image folder. I'm going to create a new folder in there called export and hit enter and then go ahead and click on open. 
So now going back into Finder, if I go to my export, I have one image, as you can see, this is 2.3 megabytes, and this is at full size. And then I have one at half size here, and this is 712 kilobytes. And as you can see, it has all my full edits that we applied to our image. And then back in my original folder, I have my PSD, which is my layered file, which contains all of my layers. So if I close this out really easily, I'll just go ahead and click on save. I can open this at any time by going to my file formats.psd, or I can simply click and drag. Let's bring my export at half size. There we go. So now I brought this JPEG in, it's half size of the original without any layers. But if I want to, I can get back to my PSD at any time, which does have my layers. And let's say well, I wanna double click right here on my gradient map, I could go ahead here and choose a different gradient. And each one of these would allow me to do a different color grade at any point in time. So there we have it, our different file formats in Photoshop and why it's so important to always save out your layered files as well as export a version out for print or web. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you tomorrow for the importance of layers and non-destructive editing. All right, everyone, we'll see you then.